Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. It is the 11th of July today and we are about to run through our weekly analysis for Bitcoin. So in this week's video, we have got a recap on the move up that we are still expecting to see. So we discussed this in detail in the last video. We mentioned that we've got a, we we're expecting a run up into 35k. Now, prior to doing that, we may have a further dip down. I'll talk about that. And it was mentioned in the thumbnail. A move down to 29k is the rough estimated target where I think we might just find support before making that next further leg up. But I just want to recap that this move that we're looking at is still very much intact. We mentioned the upper median line. We need to stay above this line of this pitchfork before moving on to our upper warning line target. So all is still looking good. We are consolidating. It has been almost two and a half weeks of consolidation, which although it seems very boring, it basically means we're going to see fireworks at the end of it. The big question is, are we going to see that explosive move to the upside or downside? Well, the way things are playing out, we still look like we're just consolidating beneath resistance and getting ready for that, that next leg up. Another really key in, important factor I want to push in this video is the fact that the dollar is looking incredibly weak so we will take a look at that in a moment as well so recap on bitcoin the move up that we're looking at currently i would say it is arguably following a corrective course okay i will put out the bullish count also in case we are going to flip bullish regardless i would still be bullish into 35k the only difference between being bullish and bearish long term is how much profit you take at 35k. If you're bearish, you take everything off the table. Whilst if you're bullish, I would still take profits here because it's resistance, but I'd probably leave some on the table, getting ready to load up again once we push through 35k. So that's the only difference in looking at it from a bullish or bearish standpoint. Regardless, so I've got this bearish count to the upside suggestive that we are completing a W, X, Y up to here, which could spell disaster and suggest that we come all the way tumbling back down. Okay. However, I need to be very, very clear. I am very open to the idea of being uh, flipping long if we see a push through this level, a retest. Uh, a corrective retest at this level and then we push higher fantastic i'll be very happy to you know add to further long positions all i'm saying is this is a really big important level of caution at 35k and we'll go into detail on that in a moment so first of all just following the corrective scenario that's a three wave move up abc to make a w we've then got an abc expanded flat to make an x wave and then we're looking at another abc scenario to make the final corrective leg that's the wide leg okay the bullish scenario the way i would be looking at it is a five wave count so a one two three expanded flat four and then fifth up to here and then i don't think that is a long enough duration for a wave two so i wouldn't be calling that the wave two i would suggest that we're probably playing out a more complex wave two which could very well be something like a running flat where you've got an a down we're making the b to the upside which would be another leg up and then we've got a c wave maybe just coming back down to this kind of region again and then you've got your major wave one your abc running flat major wave two three four five onwards and upwards okay that is the bullish scenario okay it all depends on how we react in and around this level of 35k and then again even if we do hit that level and correct as per a b wave correction for this um wave two we'd still expect to move down so even if we do come down from this level at 35k it doesn't confirm that we're major bearish we want to see how we react for example around this level uh so around this median line so regardless, there's a bit, there's a lot of overlap between a bullish and bearish count where we go up to 35k and correct all the way back down to around 30k. Okay, so even at that point, you wouldn't be able to differentiate whether we were bullish or bearish. Okay, there's a lot of overlap between the Elliott Wave counts. So main message here is there's no point having a major long term bias. The way in which we it should be traded is very much the same for both the bullish and bearish scenarios and uh, we just take it one step at a time it could get pretty exciting around this point here because then you'll get your um, confirmation whether we are going to turn in, into a major wave three up or we're just going to continue this big corrective move down 
okay so just wanted to highlight that that there just from an Elliott wave perspective uh, from a bullish or bearish point of view I've still got the same perspective with this move up I would not be surprised even if bullish to have a big correction back down to 30k before pushing higher once more okay so let's just take off the bullish scenario uh, just leaving on this corrective count for now you can ignore it now we've discussed the Elliott wave to be honest now what we're looking at is the, the confluence here so I like to use pitchforks I've used the first three pivots here for the pitchfork which we seem to be following quite nicely so it's our first wave and our second wave we've got our first pivot second pivot third pivot so shift pitchfork always remember it's, it has to be done on either the linear scale or log scale we're on the log scale which I always use and you can see how well the pitchfork is getting respected very nicely we had a really nice run up into the upper warning line got rejected a little bit of held up at the upper median line temporarily then used it as resistance down to the median line now we've gone up flipped the upper median line using it as support i want to see it continue to act as high time frame support yes we could see a little bit of a wick down beneath it which we'll discuss in a moment i do think that's possible with a move down to 29k before then ultimately going back up to hit the upper warning line where how do we determine how far up we're going to hit this upper warning line is it going to be here is it going to be here is it going to be here well that's where i will look <clears throat> At using these horizontal levels so these are basically drawn using order blocks um, so we've got our levels here I've used M for monthly W for weekly so these are the key levels that we're just ranging between if you were wondering what these horizontal levels were regarding um, so yeah that's generally the higher time frame outlook that we're looking at the other thing to discuss on the higher time frame is the 200 week simple moving average I'm not going to pull it up there's no need we're well clear of it now it was sitting at around 26 and a half K we're very well clear of that sitting currently around 30 K so main thing to understand there is we're back above it it's a very important high time frame bias indicator so being above it generally means we should be bullish and certainly I did flip my bias to bullish once we got through that uh, 200 week simple moving average so there we have it that's the the higher time frame outlook so now let's zoom in on this two and a half week bit of consolidation let's go in initially on the hourly I think that's quite a reasonable time frame to look at it so what I'm seeing here obviously it's a very complex correction we've literally just made a, a sideways re almost rectangular bit of consolidation to the side here and uh, I am seeing almost like a th three com three components to this correction so I've got like a three wave move down here then a nice three wave move up and then we're, I'm expecting another three wave move down so first leg second leg and I would not be surprised as to make another leg down so just coming into the next horizontal level which we've got as this weekly level around 29.5k so that's the level that I've got a feeling we could come to it does dip beneath this upper median line this very important upper median line of the pitchfork that we spoke about where ultimately I did want to see us hold above it I do not mind though having a wick down beneath that's there's nothing wrong with that these pitchfork lines don't have to hold absolutely perfectly they can certainly wick beneath it's, it's ultimately your daily and weekly closes with regards to these lines that are important as long as it's only a brief wick to the downside then that's all good personally though looking for long positions if we are to dip down beneath this I would probably wait for us to come back above this upper median line before taking on a long position um, that's just personal preference and um, yeah so that's the way I'm expecting things to play out so we could be close to a termination of this very long duration uh, consolidation here but yes uh, that move up here looked very corrective three wave move and in fact I've got a pitchfork for that as such uh, you can see very nicely first pivot second pivot third pivot this is a shift pitchfork very nicely into the upper warning line uh, so it's only a three wave move up you can't expect a five wave move because it one two three four would have overlapped with the wave one so that's not good uh, so it's looking very three wave-ish with a three wave -ish scenario you're generally looking at this low getting taken out to the downside hence why I think we've got that further dip down but I don't want to see it go too deep and as I say, I would not be looking for long positions down here. I would not want to catch the knife, so to speak. I would want to wait for it to come back above this upper median line, get that bit of confirmation coming in, and then look for the long positions. Okay, so that's generally the way I'm looking at it. So these horizontal levels, we can briefly just take a look. So the monthly is the level, the time frame I would 
well, I, I would look at the yearly, but there's not too much going on on the yearly or the quarterly time frame. So here on the monthly, so our monthly levels, we look at our order blocks. So we have, that was a yearly level, so ignore this top one. So very importantly, this one here, this is where we started to reverse and make this kind of order block here on the monthly. So that is where our 35K target is. Also, we've got our Camarilla pivot, weekly Camarilla pivot target up here at 35K, which I've mentioned in depth in the last video. I won't go into it because there's quite a bit to talk about. Um, and the other monthly level of interest was down here, a bit lower. So this is where you can see this red block within this upward trend started down here. This is a bit lower in the 29K region, 29.2, which again, we could come down to, okay? So I would be happy to allow price to come down to that. Coming, if we came down any lower than 29.2, I'd be very concerned about it suddenly turning bearish, to be honest. So I would not wanna see us come down much lower than that. So those are our monthly levels. Uh, then I'd go down to the weekly time frame. And it's basically this, you see this order block sticking out like a sore thumb right here. This is what I've marked out. And you'll see that these weekly levels get tested time and time again. So those are our weekly levels put on there. Another weekly level here, we've gone up and then we started to correct here. So I've marked out that one there. And then if we come down to the four hourly, we can just see how we are respecting these lines pretty nicely, getting tested time and time again. And so I wouldn't be surprised for us to test this weekly level down here as a bit of support we've not yet tested it during this two and a half week bit of consolidation so i would not be surprised for this level 29 and a half k to get tested there is that monthly level a bit lower 29.2 and certainly i don't want to see us dip any further beneath that point there okay so as i mentioned the upside confluence we've got that 35k target with the upper warning line of our major pitchfork which is already held really really nicely so I do expect a bit of a reversal at that point. However, if we manage to flip it, use it as support with a retest, fantastic. I would look for further longs. So I'm happy to adapt as time as time goes on. I'm only pointing out what I'm expecting as a, with regards to a potential reversal so that, you know we can be prepared for that kind of scenario going forward. But uh, when the time comes, we can adapt as needed. But for now, the only thing that looks pretty clear cut to me is that run up from current price, maybe dipping down to 29K, going into 35K. That's the more probable play out at present. So that's pretty much it that I want to discuss here on Bitcoin. I will, as I mentioned, just discuss the dollar, which is looking very, very weak indeed. So to look at this, let's just go on the daily to begin with. In fact, the weekly is probably the best place to start. So this is a pitchfork that really holds the price action following our financial crash in 2008. So we had our low here on the dollar 2008. First pivot, second pivot, third pivot is a modified shift pitchfork. And you can see very nicely, we, we push in from January 2021 from the median line all the way up to the upper warning line. We've then retraced to this upper median line and we seem to be consolidating there in what looks like consolidation above support, getting ready to break support to the downside. That's how it's looking. And then if we just go down to the daily and expand this a little bit, we can just see we've trended down. We've got a consolidation. There's a few different ways of looking at it. You could potentially look at it as a A, B, C, D, E, or alternatively, because you can get that converging type of bit of price action that you can see here. So that would suggest that E-Wave's in and we're going to absolutely plow to the downside straight away. Alternatively, you can argue the D-Wave hasn't quite finished yet, in which case we've still got another E-Wave to the upside. Uh, so that is still plausible, okay? So that would be a more of a descending triangle. Yeah, so that's where you've got your equal lows for the, the start, the B-Wave, the D-Wave, yeah, so you could still get a little bit of a bounce, but I've seen these triangles play out many, many times. Sometimes this E wave bounce, even if it is to play out, could be very, very shallow indeed, and all of a sudden it, it absolutely tanks. So regardless, I'm not seeing anything bullish here on the dollar. I think it would really struggle this dollar in uh, basket to get above this level of 103. Um, looking very weak indeed, which obviously is a very good sign for Bitcoin, which is priced in dollars. Uh, a weak dollar would be favorable for Bitcoin, as we all know. So that could happen. It's hard to say in terms of time. There's different ways it can play out. As I say, you could get a bit of a bounce here for the uh, for the E-wave. 
uh, or arguably the D and E have already finished here and we could just absolutely plow quickly to the downside. Regardless, it looks like we've got some very bullish price action on the near horizon for crypto. So I focused on Bitcoin there, but the rest of the alts could certainly follow suit. So we'll see how that plays out. But Bitcoin, I don't want to see it come beneath that 29.2k level. So that is the update this week. And I'll catch you on next week's video, guys. Hope this has been of value. All right, guys, take care. Thank you for your attention and watching through to the end of this video. Now, I know there's a lot of you watching that would like to learn how to confidently trade the financial markets independently. And I also know how confusing this can be regardless of how many stressful hours that you put in. For that reason, I've put together all of my trading knowledge in a complete course titled The Works. The Works consists of thorough and jargon-free lessons broken down into a comprehensive curriculum, providing you with a holistic understanding of the markets and giving you an accelerated journey to being able to analyze and trade the markets all by yourself. And for those of you that are looking for my weekly detailed video analysis on crypto and stocks, then there's Cryptology, which is a subscription that will also give you access to The Works while subscribed. For more information on what's included in the works or cryptology, you can head on over to wave618.com or alternatively use the links in the description to this video for a limited time 50% discount offer. So I hope to see you on the other side, but in the meantime, if you would like to sample some of my educational videos, then you can check out these videos that you can see on your screen right now. Thanks once again and until next time, take care.